time, fast approaching 20 minutes to 8. Let's bring you up to date with the front pages of the newspapers. Uh, the Sun is carrying Boris Johnson's claims that Vladimir Putin threatened, threatened to kill him during a phone call just ahead of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The Mail also leads with Putin's threat to Boris Johnson. He did involve missiles, it has to be said. And uh, also front page Esther Ransom talking about her fight with lung cancer. So she says that I'm fighting, but I'm still optimistic. We wish her all the very best with that. Um, here's The Guardian. It's calling out Zahawi's serious failure after breaking the ministerial code not once, but multiple times. The Times says millions of children will miss school ahead of the biggest teacher strike for 10 years. And Nigel Nelson, uh, with your papers this morning. Nigel, you'd like to begin with uh, illegal migration, this from the Times. Yes, and another um, bit of a muddle at the Home Office on the whole issue of migration. Um, it's a, a plan that they're bringing in, which is the idea that murderers and rapists will be able to um, uh, be dealt with rather quicker because they can't dodge modern slavery laws. Yeah, yeah. So it's closing a loophole. All sounds good. Um, trouble is, you, you'd imagine Imagine that if a terrorist had been identified coming into the country, however they, they got in, uh, they should be picked up immediately. The same with a, uh, a murderer who's no, who is a known murderer. Surely they would be extradited back to the country that they are wanted in. So we still haven't got to the bottom of how to deal with cross-channel migration, and that is to change the asylum system. And, and yet, Rishi Sunak has, has really pledged his premiership on this, hasn't he, getting a grip of it, and has said, judge me on it at the ballot box, and he hasn't got an awful lot of time to turn it around. No, he hasn't, and, and the way he's, he's talking about doing it, um, I mean, he uses the wrong words. He talks about that these people are illegal. Well, it's not illegal to cross the channel to claim asylum, and you have to claim asylum in this country, which is the draw that brings them across. So what he says is, oh, we can send them off to uh, a safe country or back to their homeland and finding out where they first come from is very difficult which is what home office officials keep pointing out to him and going back to a safe country well which is a safe country apart from Rwanda um, that France if they're not going to happen back are they well no I mean the whole thing is we lost all those agreements we had uh, with the European Union after Brexit the Dublin Accord was the Dublin, that's right Dublin oh so, he said the B word oh. so, <laughs> oh. <laughs> so what happens is that until we actually get those individual agreements back in again, we can't send them back. But they weren't hugely effective, were they? The Dublin Protocol, or whatever it was known as, at getting migrants. Uh, it's, it's an ongoing situation, isn't it? I mean, and it is it is important to a lot of people, and we, you know, we have to do something. But I mean, you know, France is a safe country. I know it's a cliche, and we always say that, but France is a safe country. In any case, I have another story. Yeah, people smuggling. A link, seamlessly linked this one. This is in the Daily Star, and this is smuggling gangs off a route out of the UK as well. So not only are they coming over here, uh, we're also getting rid of them. This is a chap called Mohammed Mokka Hussain, who is a ringleader um, of a people smuggling gang who's just pleaded guilty to facilitating illegal migration. But he, what he's doing as well is actually smuggling people out of the country when they have been found to have fouled in their asylum process or they are, they are criminals. So he is, there's, there's one story here about nine people found in the back of a lorry going out of the country. So it, it, it's, it's literally running an illegal travel agent. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, it's, it, it, look, as, as Nigel was quite rightly said, it's, the whole thing is, is an absolute mess, and, but no one seems to be able to do anything about it. Talking about absolute messes, <laughs> um, the, the King's coronation, uh, when it comes up in May. So from what I read over the weekend, Nigel, it seems to be that um, the King's camp uh, seemed to be making conciliatory uh, waves and noises uh, towards Harry's camp. Uh, what, what do you read into it? Well, what it seems to be is a, a bit of a Barney between uh, the king and the heir to the throne, Charles and William, where uh, King Charles wants uh, Harry to be there at the coronation with Meghan, and Prince William doesn't. That seems to be the, the sum total of it. The, the, the king's argument would appear to be from the papers this morning that um, it'll be much more of a distraction if Harry isn't there than if he is. Now, far 
be it from me to disagree with the sovereign, but mm -hmm. I'd have thought it would be the other way around. If yes, right, got... let's take a vote on this. You think um, <laughs> it would be better off not having the pair of them there. Absolutely. I tend to agree with you, Isabel. I'm, with, I'm in agreement. I think... King Charles should rise above the pettiness and have them oh, both she's there. She's going to write another book. There's going to be another. Uh, yeah, I know, <laughs> I know, I know. But I think Charles needs to be the bigger man here, and I think he needs to rise above the pettiness and the squabbling that Harry and Meghan are, um, thrive on. And I also think the other issue here is that if he's not here, he will be paid a vast amount of money to commentate for the American networks, and therefore will be all over the place talking about. Surely he okay, would. I've changed my mind. Oh, surely he would. <laughs> Surely he I'm would. Side, but the so coronation would be overshadowed door. by the presence of Harry and Meghan. Well, everyone would be watching funeral. their body language and so on. The Queen's funeral wasn't overshadowed by their presence. To be fair, everyone feared it would, but they were quite dignified. Yeah. I mean, they, they... But how do you sit there if you are Camilla, or if you're William, oh, if I you're know. Catherine, and she and he have slagged you off publicly on various talk shows in their books? Because whatever. you become the bigger person. You oh, rise above it. You, look, the, I'm a the puny God, person, I am. God, you, you, you are not. I've heard about you. <laughs> Thing. Um, but the thing is, you don't you, you don't sink to their level. And I think, you know, Charles is king. He should act like a king. And I think he should rise above, as I said, the, 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 the squabbling and the yeah, pettiness. Yeah, now. I've agreed. I've changed Thank you, mind. team girl. You've won me over. Excellent. But interesting that Archbishop of Canterbury is being brought in in the kind of John Major role. Yes. You remember how <laughs> John Major was brought in to try and yes. uh, reconcile or at least mediate between Charles and Diana. Well, now the Archbishop of Canterbury is being brought in to try and mediate between Will's and Harry. Yeah, I'm probably a very, good, a very good person to go and do that. Although, wasn't there some recollections may vary whole thing that involved the Archbishop well, well, there, yeah, he said he secretly married them and then yeah. he came out and said, actually, that's not true. Yes, yeah, exactly. Because I wonder if Harry yeah. might already be a bit miffed with the Archbishop of Canterbury. Yeah. Well, well, they should, they should have said, said, what, uh, said that he secretly yeah. married them because yeah. he couldn't. It's he's, he's it was priest. illegal. He can't do things <laughs> like that. <laughs> Right, uh, Sam Smith, Dom. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, so Let's talk he about... says he was spat on in no, the no, 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 you're oh, wrong. You, well, hold, wrong. On. Right. hold on, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. You actually broke the golden rule. You referred to Sam Smith as he. Oh, all oh, right. You right. can't do that now, Raymond. Come on, do so get I'm down with the they. kids, they. But it's not a plural. I, look, honestly, Nigel, Nigel and I have just had this discussion. It's like I would hate to be teaching English in school at the moment because how do you teach grammar? Any case, Sam Smith has a new album and a new pop video out and this has gone mad over the weekend it's only released two days ago it's got 1.6 million views in two days um, on that their YouTube um, and the new album is called Gloria if you're interested but it is a very very raunchy sexy very very near the knuckle pop video and there's a much debate going on about age restrictions and should young children you're looking at some of the tamer bits here now oh. uh, yes some of the outfits aren't that flattering it has to be said um, yeah, it's a bit Danny LaRue, isn't it? Well, yeah, there are, there's lots of references, and it talks about chopping lines as well, and I don't know what he's referring to there, obviously. But lots of debate about young children will be watching this, and it is, it's a bit too... It's a bit too near the knuckle. However, Never. surely this is put on earth. Pop videos are put on earth to do what pop videos do, which is to sell fairly average music. Pop videos have always done that. I mean, Madonna did it, um, Blurred Lines. All the rap artists pretty much had very, very near the knuckle over the top sexy videos involving drugs and not many clothes, etc., etc. So, But I'm interested in this, but I'm not so interested in the music. I'm interested in this, but he, it, they, they were spat <laughs> on in the street over my pronouns. Yes. Well, but he has made a big deal about it. He, he came out as non-binary in 2019, and he has given an interview to plug this new album. Uh, called Gloria, which is a woman's name, so that also confuses me. Anyway, um, and he is talking about the reaction from there. I said he, and the, oh my god, it's hard. It's, it's okay. very right. hard. Um, he, hmm, they are talking about reaction from their family, which has been fine. Uh, don't complain that I'm just playing by the rules here. Um, but they say they have been treated appallingly on the streets with people spitting at them because of their. I'm giving up now. They're actually. Yeah. I can post I, the videos I, online if you want. After a while, you can get used to it. I write. I write they now in the newspaper, and I do it, do it regularly, and it, it doesn't seem to jar. The more you get used to it, it's fine. And also bear in mind that it's not they is. They is a plural, and that's right. But so is you, even if it means sing, sing, uh, yes, singular. Yes. So you is a is a plural plural verb but as well. But do you think people? I'm, I'm not, not condoning spitting ever. Absolutely deplorable behaviour. But do people object to him because of his pronouns, or do people object to him because of 
his hypocrisy or the way he's been the big driver trying to change uh, the Brits and then sure enough all of the women have been excluded from, from the top list. I mean, there's, there is a legitimate argument from, from a yes. wing of what would be described as TERFs, aren't there? These women who are... Feminists, trying, as we yeah, used feminists. to call them. We're not transphobics. I mean, we don't hate he's anybody now. controversial rather than the fact that he's Well, this is it. The, the, yeah, the non-binary, the non non-gender specific, um, whether it's a pop awards or, or acting awards. And the thing is, when you do this, so it's like one, one category for whatever sex you want to be or no sex whatsoever, it's always... The men, I'm sorry, I can still use that word, it's always the men that get all the nominations and the women lose out. Yeah. OK, Dawn and Nigel, you'll be nominated again in 45 minutes' time. Uh, they'll be back with more from the papers for the moment. Thank you very <laughs> much indeed.